agreement and therefore will carry legal weight under Article 31 of the Vienna Convention. Mr. Nigel Dodds. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, can I too join with others who have uh, commended the Attorney General? And I want to pay tribute to him in terms of the dealings that he has had with us and holding entirely to his word that he would yeah, yeah. deliver a totally objective and fair legal analysis and opinion on whatever came back. So I want to pay tribute publicly as well as what I've said privately to him in that regard. Um, would he uh, agree that in relation to the reduction in risk of being held in the backstop in relation to the EU acting in bad faith or want of best endeavours, does he agree with his previous advice at paragraph 29 that all the EU would have to show good faith would be to consider the UK's proposals, even if they ultimately reject them. This could go on repeatedly without such conduct giving rise to bad faith or failure. And on the point about if it isn't a question of bad faith, but if it's just a question that the two sides can't reach agreement, he is saying in paragraph 19 that his legal opinion, the legal risk remains unchanged. We know already from the Irish government and from others what they see as the ultimate destination for Northern Ireland. The backstop is the bottom line. From what the Attorney General is saying today, provided there is no bad faith, the fact is that Northern Ireland and the rest of the United Kingdom could be trapped if it's a question that the EU does not agree with the United Kingdom to a superseding agreement. I'm extremely grateful to the Honourable Gentleman for that question. Let me deal with it one by one. First, my opinion has changed in connection with the ability of this country to prove bad faith if it occurred. There is now a new contextual framework for judging whether the other party is using best endeavours or good faith. The time has been made of the essence, and time has been made of the essence in specific connection with the negotiating of alternative arrangements. A specific work track is set out, a specific timetable is set out. It would be unconscionable, as I say in my opinion, at, uh, I forget the paragraph, but the Honourable Right Honourable General will have it, unconscionable if having said to this country, we will set up a, spe a specific, discrete work track on alternative arrangements, which are defined in this new document as meaning facilitative techniques, technologies and customs procedures. It would be unconscionable if, having set up a timeline for negotiating those alternative arrangements, 12 months, or we must intensify our efforts, it would be extraordinary if they never agreed to use a single one and they refused every proposal reasonably adjusted to their core interests. It would be, I say in the written opinion, I stand by it, it would be a potential breach of best endeavours of good faith. Best endeavours is defined in this joint instrument now as requiring them to consider adverse interests and matters that are adverse to their interests. So even if these facilitative technological and custom measures were adverse to their interests, still the duty requires them. Therefore, if there was a pattern of refusal, a systematic refusal to consider these alternative arrangements, we would have a case before the arbitration panel, and it would be a potential serious breach of good faith. I say I believe that with all candour to the honourable gentleman. He knows I wouldn't say it if I didn't mean it. It's there in my written opinion. I urge him to consider it.